Good uh, morning, everybody. Today is still Sunday, September 15th, 2024. You will see this on Wednesday, September 18th. And the reason for that is because the Lord has called myself and the prayer team out on a prayer retreat in order to pray on behalf of this nation, what's going on with it and what's going on with President Trump, what's going on with all these things that are around the world. He wanted us to stop what we were doing and go on a prayer retreat. So um, I am right now pre-recording all these words for you. And so you have these exact words that God wants given out for th this very time, these very days, and these very hours. It's very specific because God is giving out uh, revelation. Knowledge is giving out these prophetic words for you right now. That's why you don't usually see me uh, rebroadcast a lot when I'm gone because we are living in these unprecedented and unconventional times, and he wants these now words and now revelations for you. That's why I do what I do before I leave town. Anytime I make sure that I always pre-record these for you. So these are new prophetic words, and these are revelations that God's giving to me with these prophetic words. This is not a rerun or a uh, rebroadcast. This is fresh manna. From heaven. And before I get to this prophetic word, I want to give you an encouraging scripture for today. I know that I just pre recorded a video for you from yesterday. And one of that was talking about, about all the attacks that uh, we are going through. And what God needs us to do is to praise and worship. Another way how we praise and worship, no matter what the enemies are doing and how dark times may seem or overwhelming. Uh, or uh, weighted down that you may feel. These are scriptures. These are encouragement. Write these encouraging scriptures down. Read them and ask God for the revelation to get these down in your heart, to just let that joy of the Lord take over. Let the peace of God and that joy that, or the peace that passes all understanding. And this is the encouraging scripture I want to give to you today because we do live in a very dark world. And there's a lot of things that are going on that are wrong. There's a lot of evil that's trying to dominate and to destroy this earth. But one of the things that I love about God's word is he, he will say there is a problem, but he will always give you the solution. That's him. He doesn't leave you in that problem. He always gives you the answer and he is your answer. The word of God is your answer. He's truth. And the word of God sets you apart. It sets you free. He's redeemed you. He cuts off the enemies. He brings the enemies to nothing. And so when he's giving us these warnings, because I have to give prophetic words that do have warnings in them. He's been giving a lot of warnings lately. That should not weigh us down. It should not get us worried or afraid. Because what God is saying in his word in Colossians 1 and verse 12, Colossians 1 and verse 12, give thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion, which is inheritance of the saints, God's holy people in the light. Remember, we're God's holy people and we're supposed to be the light in this world. The world is dark. Well, we're supposed to shine our light that's on the inside of us, greater is he that's in me, that's he that's in the world, God is light. We're supposed to shine that light brighter and destroy the power of darkness. God is not sitting and wanting us to sit back and just take everything that enemies are dishing out at us. He doesn't want us to sit there and have our lights dim because we're so full of stress, anxiety, fear, worry, depression, and all this darkness that's trying to overwhelm and dim your light. You break free from that and you make sure your light shines so bright it destroys the power of the darkness against you. God has given you that ability. He is light. He lives in you. Here's another one. First Corinthians, first Corinthians, Corinthians. I hope I didn't say Corinthians earlier. If I did, I apologize. It's Colossians. Colossians 1.12 is what I just read. And this is Colossians 1.13. I apologize if I said Colossians or Corinthians earlier when I meant Colossians 1.12 and 1.13. All right. Colossians 1.13, the Father 
has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his son of his love. He's drawn us out of that darkness. This world has become very dark. The evil is trying to overwhelm it and consume it. But God said, no, I have drawn you out. He's drawn you out. You're not subject to it. You have to bow your knee to it. You don't have to submit to what the enemies are doing. God has drawn you out. He's delivered and drawn us to himself. Out of the control of the dominion of darkness. So God has delivered. He's drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness. So there is a con uh, control and dominion of darkness upon this world. But God says, no, I've drawn you to myself. That's why he has me on here every day, whether I'm in town or whether I'm not. He's drawing you to himself, drawing you to that light to destroy the power of the dominion of darkness that's trying to overwhelm you and that's trying to overtake you. And that's trying to get you to give up and quit and give in to a defeat that's not yours. The defeat belongs to the enemy. It doesn't belong to you. God is light and light destroys darkness. We're supposed to shine our light. That's why we're supposed to know the word of God, spend more time in the word of God, spend more time with him. So no matter the attacks against you and I, no matter how dark our situations may seem and how the enemy is trying to attack that light on the inside of you to grow it dim. But God said, no, let your light shine. I have delivered you. I've drawn you to myself. That's what God's telling you. He's picking you up out of that darkness. He's shining his light, his glory, his manifest his presence, his power, and his goodness upon you. You are not defeated. Your situation is not hopeless. And yes, it may be impossible, but that's where God shows up. He shows up in the impossible. When you've done everything you can do, you stand and then stand there for. You stand on the word of God, and then God shows up. That's what he told me. Something one time when I was in a very distressful situation. He said, Julie, put this situation in my hands. I am more than capable of taking care of it for you. When it's in your hands and you're trying to control it, it's not in mine. And you restrict me from what I want to do to help you. It's something so simple. But we try to fix our own problems. If we're trying to control everything and try to figure things out, God's not asking you to figure it out. He's asking you to trust him that he already has a way out. God is your way out. If your life seems dark, and trust me, I've been in a very dark situation multiple times. He is that light. And he destroys that darkness. He destroys that deception and that lie. And he draws you to himself. He delivers you from that situation like you were never in it to begin with. He's our father. He doesn't fail. And I hope that these scriptures, Colossians, I got it right this time, Colossians 1, 12 and 1, 13. Go read them. Get that revelation down inside of you. No matter how dark this world has become, God has drawn you to himself and he's delivered you out of it. So you are not subject to anything that goes on. You're redeemed, Galatians 3 and 13 and 14. You're redeemed from the curse. Okay, now I am going to read this prophetic word. It's called the war against the middle class. So God is giving us a heads up about what has been going on and why and what course, what he's going to do about it. The war on the middle class, this is the second prophetic word I heard on Saturday. 
uh, September 14th. Now, the first one you are going to hear, you, you heard on Monday, today Sunday, so I'm going to give it out tomorrow, but for you, it'll be on Monday. For me, it's tomorrow. <laughs> um, but this is the second one that I heard on September 14th. My children, the middle class is being hit with everything the establishment and the globalists can throw at it. The middle class is being taken out to destroy capitalism and to take out the United States. The middle class has been a threat to the globalists. The entrepreneurship is a nightmare and a thorn in the side of globalism. And that's why they've attacked small businesses to gain more control over products and goods so their market and their companies would crush anyone who is trying to take out or trying to take more away from them. Your enemies do not want any competition. They want to completely dominate everything globally. Your enemies want full control and they want you to leave. They want you to be even more enslaved. They don't want you to have any freedoms, free thinking, because you would, could potentially be a threat to them. And that's why so much propaganda lies and deception for mind control. So you would obey their every command and you would not be strong enough mentally or physically to fight them back. Your enemies are trying to take out anything that threatens their global control. The United States and the working class is their worst fear and has been their most annoying competitor that they want to crush as fast as they can. That's why Mike David is such a threat to them to save this country and to make the middle class even stronger. Lord, why do they hate the middle class so much? Because it goes against communistic and socialistic agendas. In a third world country dominated and controlled by the elites, you don't see a middle class like you see in the United States. They hate anyone who can make money on their own and can take it from them. The establishment's war on the middle class is about to be more clear. Kamala will continue to slip and say words she doesn't mean to say. This puppet and your government hate the middle class, and that is about to be proven. My children, get ready for more things they will try to take you out with. Remember and pay close attention. I said they would try. I never said they would accomplish their plans. As they pursue this war more and more, the war against my David and the war against this country, I told you before, the more they will be exposed and the more they will be brought down. They are nothing compared to me. And they soon are about to figure that out. Save the Lord of hosts. The mainstream media is about to tear itself apart. More companies will attack one another and expose one another to try and gain more viewers and ratings that they have lost to this great deception. There's a growing deception in the middle class or growing desperation in the media. Let me read that again. There is a growing desperation in the media to try and gain back and to dominate the airwaves. They are trying to take it for, away from the independent journalists, and that's why they have tried to silence and censor so many. The mainstream media is about to collapse in a major way. I will bring these giants down in front of the world, says the Lord. My children, pray for your cities, pray for your neighborhoods, Pray for your schools. Pray and plead my blood for protection against these, their attacks that they will try against you and the judgments that will hit them. I repeatedly told you it's about to get darker. It's about to look much worse because of your enemy's destruction. Remember in my word, I am your fortress to protect. 
I am here to guide. I'm here to deliver and restore what has been lost. I am moving my hand to save and to defend you from the ones you see before you. They are being cut off and brought to nothing before you, say the Lord, your Redeemer. The last several years, but especially lately, I have like this inside of my heart and in my, my spirit. I know that I know that I know God is telling us. He's been saying this, but you, you can feel the intensity. You can feel what God is saying. He's saying, look, it's going to get darker. That's guaranteed. It's going to happen. It's going to get darker. But he's saying and reminding us, just like he said in that word, in that encouraging scripture, he's reminding God, his people, God's people. He's saying, look, it's going to get darker. But look what it says in my word that I have delivered and drawn us to himself. He has, the father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness. So we're not supposed to fear because we're supposed to be like, Lord, I thank you that you have delivered. You've drawn us out of the control and dominion of darkness. So it doesn't matter how dark it gets. It doesn't matter how overwhelming it may seem. I thank you that I'm not a partaker of it. You saved your people in the land of Goshen, and I thank you you are doing the same thing right now. I thank and praise you, Father God, that things may be shaking all around me, but I thank you that I will not be shaken because I am standing on your word. I trust and believe what you say, what you said, you said in your word that you don't fail, that you will never leave me, you will never forsake me. A thousand may fall at one side, 10,000 another, hour, but it won't come near me. God has been, this last few years, especially since COVID, he has been preparing our hearts to receive his words and revelation knowledge so we don't just be a punching bag to our enemies, so we don't just sit there and just take everything the enemy dishes out at us. We're supposed to stand up. We're supposed to fight. We're supposed to uh, like roar like the lion of the tribe of Judah because we know he lives in us. We're supposed to fight. We're supposed to stand. We're not supposed to quit and give up. God has been trying to get these words to us, these prophetic words, the revelation knowledge that he's been giving us inside of these prophetic words and the prophetic words and the revelation that he's giving inside his written word that goes along with these prophetic words is because he's waking his people up. He's getting them, he's, he's perfecting their faith. He's getting you to know how powerful you are with him. He's getting to know that you're not subject to anything that the, the enemy throws at you. He wants you to know that you have complete the power, authority, and dominion, like it says in Luke 10, 19. He says that in Genesis 1, 26 and 28, you can see his, his heart was for mankind to have complete authority and dominion in this earth. It should, does not belong to the enemy, but the enemy has deceived God's people out of it. Religious traditions and legalism have brought people into submission. God's people have been brought to such a submission to the enemies and just believing they can do whatever they want when they want against you. And that's just such as life. That's just a system. That's just the government. That's just this. That Satan wants you to make excuses so you put up with it. And God's saying this. Don't put up with this anymore. He even says, go to Psalm. 18, Psalm 18 and verse 48. Who delivers me from my enemies? Yes, you lift me up above those who rise up against me. Well, our enemies have been rising up against us. And God says, look, I cause you to rise up above your enemies. So take this word, take this revelation, get it on the inside of you. Ask me what you want. He's, he's like asking, he's like saying, my children, ask me for this. Ask me to raise you up above your enemies. I will do it for you. Just trust and believe that I am greater than any enemy, that I am greater than their plans, that I am greater than these globalists. He kept saying, you hear this prophetic word, global, globalism, the elites, uh, global control. He kept saying that because they're trying to bring everything, a one world religion, uh, one world currency, so financial system, a one world government. They're, they're trying to combine everything, but they can't do that 
with the United States and the middle class in its way. They can't do that with Israel being its own country and them fighting for themselves and having to defend themselves because, and, and they know how to defend themselves. God is with them. No matter how many enemies that have surrounded them or attacked them and they try to annihilate Israel, Israel still is God's land and it still has God's got people in it. They hate Israel. They hate the United States. They hate it. But one thing they can't take away is the blessing. Now, we've minimized the effects of that blessing because so many people in this nation have turned against God. But I love what it says in 2 Chronicles 20 or 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Those who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. You turn from your wicked ways. Okay, let's read it. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek, crave, and require necessity in my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive them their sin and heal their land. Where does it say that we have to give up and quit? It doesn't. We have giants in our land. We have giants who are dominating, who are trying to control, who are trying to annihilate the foundation of this country and what this country stands for. We should have the life and the liberty and the pursuit of happiness. We should have those things. That's part of our Declaration of Independence. We have a right to those things. But they want to deceive you out of those things. They want you to truly believe that you don't have that ability, that you don't have those freedoms, that you don't have that kind of liberty. They want you to think that you are owned and controlled by the government. And that they're the ruling class and there's nothing you can do about it. No, it's we the people. We're supposed to dominate over the government. The government is not, not supposed to dominate like they are over the, the country. That's not their job. Their job is to up, uphold the Constitution of the United States of America and uphold the law. And they're not doing it. They're supposed to protect us. They're not doing it. They're paying our enemies. Everything they're supposed to do, they're not doing. Remember, when the wicked are in, in control, the people mourn or they groan. It talks about that in Proverbs 28 and 29. Those, both those chapters. But when the righteous are in leadership, the people rejoice. Why? Because there's justice, there's liberty, there's freedom. So we have to stand up. And now God's telling us to specifically pray for the middle class and the war against the middle class. Because the middle class is strong. We have capitalism in this country. We have a country that's strong financially. The country needs to be strong spiritually first. Remember I had just given you yesterday. For me it was just a few hours ago, but for you it was, it was yesterday. They are petrified. They're afraid of us uniting. They're afraid of us praying. They're afraid of us fighting. And we have to keep fighting. Because why? Psalm 1848, who delivers me from my enemies? Yes, you lift me up above those who rise up against me. Let's, um, go to 2 Corinthians 3. Um, second Corinthians three and verse 17. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Okay. Remember first John four, four, the greater one lives on the inside of you than he is in the world. The greater one lives on the inside of you. That means liberty is on the inside of you. Let's look up the word, the definition for liberty. Liberty is a state of freedom 
or the liberty to do what one wants without being physically restrained or controlled. I want to read that again. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the, the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, or there is freedom. The Lord lives in us. Freedom belongs to us. Liberty belongs to us. Where God is, there is liberty. So all these things that the enemies are trying to deceive you out of, they're already rightfully yours. They are in you. So now what we had to do is we had to tap into it. And I we just say, thank you, Lord. I thank you for liberty. I thank you, Father God, for this state of freedom. I thank you, Father God, no open form against us shall prosper. I thank you, Father God. No matter what the enemies are trying to do to destroy liberty, they can't because they can't destroy you. That's why in this fight to kill the soul of this nation, they can't. Because the soul of this nation, where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. There is freedom. God is on the inside of us. We are here. And God said in his word, and I'm sorry I'm getting a little excited. So I get a little excited. I shout sometimes. Joshua 1 in verse 3. Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, that I have given you as I have promised Moses. Where we are, where we are walking, where we have we take authority and power and dominion upon this earth and upon this nation. It is our nation and it does not belong to this rogue and unruly government. Our foot, we're walking all around it. We walk everywhere in this country. There's people in every state that I know that watch. God is on the inside of you. Liberty is on the inside of you. Freedom is on the inside of you. You should not be physically restrained or controlled. Mentally, physically, financially, in any way. You're not supposed to be uh, physically restrained or controlled. Another example, it should be liberty, freedom from control, interference, obligation, restriction, hampering, conditions, etc. Power or right of doing, thinking, and speaking. God is our liberty. God is our freedom. These people are trying to, to steal the truth of this. That's why when we get together every day like this and we are hearing this truth, it's destroying their deception. It's destroying their propaganda. It's destroying their mind control. They hate it. That's why something like me was censored so much. <sighs> Google and YouTube. But what does it say right here? And I... God's working on that, and I have favor, and I know that it's going to be restored back to me no matter what it looks like. All right, that means my, you know, getting back on YouTube at some point. J uh, Joshua 1.5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. God doesn't fail us, doesn't forsake us. Verse 6. Be strong, confident, of good courage, for you shall cause the people to inherit the land which I swore to your fathers to give to you. Verse 8. This is Joshua 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall, you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to what all is written in it. For when you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall uh, deal wisely and have good success. How do you have uh, deal wisely and have good success? How are, you, how are you strong and courageous? Get into God's word day and night. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you? God's commanded us to fight in this battle. He summoned us to it. Fight that good fight of faith, remember. But Joshua 1 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, be dismayed for your God is with you wherever you go. God is with us wherever we go. So we have liberty or freedom everywhere we go. We know God's with us everywhere we go. God lifts us up above our enemies. And then he also says in his word, in Deuteronomy 28, verse 7, that our enemies come against us one way and scatter before us seven ways. God, why? Because God is our freedom. God is our liberty. God is everything that we need. And he's the one who lifts us up above our enemies. He's our victory. He's our fortress. He's our deliverer. He said he's drawn us to himself. 
So if we're drawn to him and we're with him, who can defeat him? No one. That's why God's people should be holding their head up high and we should be standing and fighting the good fight of faith. And we're not, if we get knocked, knocked out, if we get knocked down, who cares? Get back up. We're not knocked out. Micah 7, verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O Miami. When I fall, I shall arise. Well, um, hold on. <clears throat> Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the, uh, the Lord shall be a light unto me. There's a lot of darkness. But God's a light unto us. Even though we get knocked down a lot because the enemies do are doing all these different things against us. But we are not knocked out. We can get back up again. Get up. Start fighting that good fight of faith that we're summoned to. We are called to this battle, but we are destined to win it. My favorite teaching, one of, by Jerry Seville. Go, go. He's got a book. Go read the book. He's got a teaching. Go listen to it. I love it. We're all warriors in Christ, and we need to know how to dominate. We need to know how to use the word of God, the sword of the spirit. We need to know that we are in this battle, but we are going to win this battle because we have liberty on the inside of us. We have freedom on the inside of us. We have victory on the inside of us. We have the deliverer on the inside of us. We have the healer on the inside of us. We have the provider on the inside of us. We got it all. We have everything we need. He's on the inside of us. And he is greater than anything that we see. He's greater than any enemy. We just have to get to know that. All right. Let's go back over this prophetic word. My children, the middle class is being hit with everything the establishment and the globalists can throw at it. The middle class is being taken out to destroy capitalism and to take out the United States. That's why you see people like the Biden. You see people like Kamala. You see people like Obama. You see people in the party left or the uniparty because there's certain Republicans too because they're just as bad. Um, some of the rhinos in that party. The establishment's goal is to take out the middle class. Why do you think gas prices? Why do you think inflation? Why do you think all these things that are going on? What do you think COVID? COVID destroyed so many businesses. It was meant to take them down. Less competition for the big wigs. And you guys will already have seen this. The big companies, State Street, Vanguard, BlackRock, they don't like entrepreneurship. They don't like you free thinking. They don't like you making money on your own because they want to control and dominate everything. Those three companies. Do some research. And remember the person who tried to assassinate our rightful president? He was in a BlackRock commercial. Coincidence? No. So we know they're trying to take out the middle class. That's why the middle class is under so much right now of oppression financially from the Biden and Kamala's regime, now you know why. Now you know why they're picking on the middle class so hard. The middle class has been a major threat to globalists. The entrepreneurship is a nightmare and a thorn in the side of globalism. Everything is about globalism. That's why they've attacked small businesses to gain more control over products and goods so their market and their companies would crush anyone who is trying to take more away from them. They want it all. They don't want just some. They want all of it. Your enemies do not want any competition. They want to completely dominate everything globally. They want to dominate everything. They don't want you to have your businesses. They don't want you to be successful. They want to control you. They want a limit of how far you can go. What do you think God's trying to get our attention? This is what happened with Pharaoh. This is the same system. 
This is the same oppression. This is the same type of task smashers and what they're doing. It's the same thing. It's the same spirit behind them. It's the same type of demonic, evil darkness that Satan tried to bring on this world back in that time too. And God wants us to be aware of it. Your enemies want full control. They want you to be even more enslaved. They don't want you to have any freedoms or free thinking because you could potentially be a threat to them. Why do you think all of them that follow them? I've seen some TikTok videos. I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not on TikTok, okay? Hear me right. I'm not on TikTok. Like little YouTube shorts or whatever they are. There might be YouTube instead of TikTok. I don't know. People have been showing me these short little clips. I don't know where they all come from. These people have lost their ever loving mind. I mean, literally, it's so sad how weak mentally these people are. They panic and they scream and they do crazy stuff. They're unhinged. That's exactly what the enemy wants from you. They want you weak because you're easy to control. That's why so much propaganda and lies and deception for mind control. So you would obey their every command and you would not be strong enough mentally or physically to fight them back. Look up Rockefellers. Look what, look what, look how big pharma started. You know that we're worse off. Even all those, all these medical things that we have in this world right now. All of this it seems like things good mentally or uh, 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 medically. But why are more people dying? Why are people worse off? Why are people, why are more people now on medications than they were 50 years ago? If medications are so good and some of these medical interventions are so great, I'm not saying everything's wrong medically. I'm not saying that because I, I love and appreciate doctors and nurses. I'm not saying that at all. I'm talking about the ones who dominate and control this industry. Think about it. Why are there people more seeing psychiatrists than ever before? Why are more people on medication? Why are more people and fear, worry, and anxiety, or more people so sick physically they cannot live without medication. They want to weaken you so you can't fight them back. But God has given us the ability. He's given us the freedom. He's given us a, his blood covenant promise. And we are redeemed from all of that. And we are delivered from all of that. We just have to trust in God. Your, man, your enemies are trying to take out anything that threatens our global control. He's saying global, globalism. He's talking about that again. The United States and the working class is their worst fear. And it has been the most annoying competitor that they want to crush as fast as they can. That's why my David is such a threat to them to save this country and to make the middle class even stronger. It will destroy their globalism. That's why they hate it. It'll make the United States strong. They don't want the United States strong. If the United States is strong, then there would be no globalism. There would be no global government. There would be no global one world financial system. They want it all. They have a lot of the world right now, but they want it all. And then the Lord knew you guys were not a question. Lord. Why do they hate the middle class so much? Well, he's going to give us more examples because it goes against the communistic and socialistic agendas. Communism and socialism destroy nations. They collapse governments and society as a whole. In a third world country dominated and controlled by the elites, you don't see a middle class like you see in the United States. They hate anyone who can make money on their own and take it from them because they want everything. I don't care how you got a little piece of, piece of the pie of the financial system. They want the whole pie. They don't want to share. The establishment's war on the middle class is about to be more clearer. So it's, we're we're going to start seeing it. It's be more evident. Kamala will continue to slip and say words she doesn't mean to say. 
this puppet and your government hate the middle class and it's a that is about to be proven so we're going to start seeing why and the war against the middle class and they're going to start talking more about it and they're not going to mean to say those some of the words that they're going to say some things i think that they're blatantly they're blatantly prideful and they make it very they're arrogant and they make it very plain and some people just don't get it let's be more and more clear to everyone even the people who are blind before my children get ready for more things that will try to take you out uh what, what they will try to take you out with remember and pay close attention i said they would try i never said they will accomplish their plans so god wants you to know that your enemies are not going to accomplish their plans they have plans but they're not going to accomplish their plans as they pursue this war more and more the war against my david and the war against this country i told you before the more they will be exposed and the more i'll bring them that they'll be brought down they are nothing compared to me and they are soon about to figure that out saith the lord of hosts the mainstream media is about to tear itself apart more companies will attack one another and expose one another to try and gain more viewers and ratings that they have lost to this great deception there's a growing desperation now he's saying the news media is like you know nbc or cnn or msnbc or abc or whatever they're going to start tearing themselves apart why because they're growing in desperation is the growing desperation of the media to try and gain an end to dominate the airwaves again so they used to dominate people used to trust and believe journalism they used to trust and believe the mainstream media now barely anyone does they're hurting they're hurting financially for ratings and um the things that used to uh help them gain financially they're losing it all and it's going other places again that's a threat to them. That's a threat to their globalism. Independent journalists, they hate. They are trying to take away from the independent journalists, and that's why they have tried to silence and censor so many. The mainstream media is about to collapse in a major way. I will bring these giants down in front of the world, says the Lord. Well, God brought Pharaoh down. He can bring any giant down. It doesn't matter how big they are or how many there are. My children, pray for your cities, pray for your neighborhoods, pray for your schools, pray and plead the blood for my protection against their attacks that they will try against you, the judgment that will hit them. I repeatedly told you it's about to get darker. It's about to look much worse because of your enemy's destruction. We're supposed to pray. God has told us to pray. We're supposed to plead the blood of Jesus. And how do you do that? I plead the blood of Jesus over my house. I plead the blood of Jesus over my family or whatever. And you just keep going. I plead the blood of Jesus. We can't see the blood. The enemy can see the blood. The enemy can't pass the blood. The blood is the key. The blood of Jesus Christ that destroyed the power of the enemy. So we're going to start seeing it get darker because the more the enemies are being destroyed, the more they're going to try to destroy us. It's not going to work. Their plans are going to go as planned. But that's why we're going to start seeing it so much darker. And that's why the children of Israel saw it so much darker in Egypt, too, because that was their enemy's destruction. Remember, in my word, I'm your fortress to protect. I'm here to guide. I'm here to deliver and restore what has been lost. I'm here and I'm moving my hand to save and defend you from the ones that you see before you. They are being cut off and brought to nothing before you, saith the Lord, your Redeemer. So we have to know our enemies are being brought to nothing. They're being cut off. God even says that in his word in so many different times. And one of them is Psalm 37. So what we had to do is remind ourselves, keep our joy, protect our joy. Remember, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We've got to protect our joy, protect our peace that passes on understanding. We have to realize and not be afraid. Don't go again and be enslaved to that fear, be enslaved to that doubt, be enslaved to that worry, be enslaved to that anxiety, be enslaved to that depression. Because he is the one who's already set us free. And remember, he's our light. He's on the inside of us. He's our liberty. Where God is, there is liberty. He's our freedom. We have to know these things. When we know the truth, then that truth sets us free. And that's why it's so important to know that truth. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, right now in Jesus' name, let's pray over every person on the sound of my voice. No matter what has been going on in this nation or in their nation, we thank you, Father God, that we have a greater revelation that you live on the inside of us. You are greater than our enemy. You are liberty, and liberty is in us. That means we have the right to those freedoms because it's already been paid for. We thank you, Father God, 
that we will not give up, that we will not quit no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sees, because we will walk by faith and not by sight. We th they thank you, Father God. You've called us to this battle. You said to fight the good fight of faith. But a good fight is the one we win. So we know no matter what, no matter what the enemies try to do, no matter what they're throwing at us, I thank you, Father God, each and every person at the sound of my voice are getting a greater revelation of liberty and light and that you are greater and that you scatter and shatter the enemy. You knock them out. You did that knockout punch. I thank you, Father God. You can break their jaw. You shatter their teeth. You destroy the power of the enemy in every way. No one can withstand your power. And you dwell on the inside of us. And I thank you. They know more of that fact. They know more of that truth. They have that great of God inside mine that you are there with them wherever they are. Even in their darkest of times, even the most stressful in, in situations that they are in, you are there with them. And you are that light that destroys that darkness. And you are that freedom that destroys that captivity in those prison cells they've been in and that chains that they've been under. Father God, that the enemy tried to hold them back and to keep them down. We well, can't because of the name and because of the blood of Jesus. So I thank you that they're standing and they're fighting and they keep their joy and they keep their peace. And I thank you, Father God, they know that you are their comforter and you are their standby. You are their advocate. You are their deliverer. You are their healer and you are their provider and you are everything they need you to be. And I thank you, Father God, for their protection. No matter what attack the enemies try, no matter what weapon they use, we thank you that no weapon formed against this nation shall prosper. No weapon formed against your churches and your people shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We know that it says we are in this world, but we are not of it. So we are not subject to anything that they try to do against us. And we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, let's encourage you today. And if you have any prayer requests, just know that we have a very powerful prayer team here. And we love you and we are praying for you so you are not alone. You can go to our website at jgminternational.org under our contact page. Or you can write us at Julie Green Ministries International, 4620 East 53rd Street, Suite 200, Davenport, Iowa, 52807. And yes, we do read those uh, prayer, prayer requests and praise reports. We do pray over them. We pray over you each and every day. And also, if you want any Julie Green Ministries merchandise, you can go to 3 sonsthreadscom That's 3 sonsthreadscom We'll hope to encourage you today. Please like, subscribe, and share, and give this to everyone you know. Who needs to hear an encouraging word? Who needs to hear the truth? Because the truth will set you free.